Welcome back, party people. So on our last video, we had finished installing StealthWatch 7.0 and I've configured nothing yet except for what you saw in the last video. There's a lot I can go through here um, and configure with you. I can do it all in one video, but I think it would be harder for people if they're just looking for one specific thing or a set of things to configure to be able to sit there and have to watch a, a 60 minute video. So I'm going to make a series of videos on StealthWatch and kind of walk through some of the configurations with you. So in this video, we're just going to talk about the um, appliance administration and uh, basic configurations here. As of StealthWatch 7.0, you have the ability to do centralized management. So you can configure, you know, actual management and uh, appliance configurations from the the StealthWatch management console. So as we saw last time, let me zoom in so it's a little easier to see. As we saw the last time um, in the last video, the SMC and the uh, flow collector were both showing up in that StealthWatch central management. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, edit the appliance configuration for the flow collector and let's go ahead and take a look first. So the first thing here, you can see the appliance configuration if you wanted to make some configuration changes to like the uh, network interfaces and certain things do require reboot as you can see here, like if you're changing anything with the appliance identity, we will have to um, add some certain, uh, s some certain uh, certificates to the management center uh, or the management console when we're doing a video on ICE integration, but for now I'm gonna leave this be. I am gonna go ahead and enable SSH root access. I do like to be able to, to uh, access that. I have also noticed that in certain, th certain things when you're configuring this, you wanna apply the settings first and then come back when you're done because um, it does need to reboot in certain cases and um, apply those configurations before you, it allows you to configure anything else. Um, I've seen it error out if I've made too many changes to the appliance without saving and applying it first. So I'm going to go ahead and just first on both appliances, I'm going to config, I'm going to go ahead and enable SSH and root access and click apply. And you'll see here the configuration changes are, are pending. Once that's completed, I'll go in and change the next thing. So I'm behind a proxy in my lab. I'm gonna have to make sure that's configured. And I'll just walk through some of the different things we can change from a management perspective. And just uh, because this can take a couple minutes, I'm gonna pause this video and then come back once this, is, this configuration change uh, has applied. Okay, that didn't take too long. So let's go back and edit the configuration again. And network services, let's see. I'm not gonna enable SNMP quite yet. I don't actually have my prime, infra my prime server set up again. So I'll come back to that. Um, internet proxy, now that is one I'm going to definitely configure. And in this case, it's behind a lab proxy. It, you do have to put the IP address in there. So not just the URL. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and put my lab proxy in and put the port and click apply before I, I move forward. Apply settings. And let's go ahead and do this with the SMC as well. Same thing. I'm going to go ahead and use the same proxy IP address, same port, and just click apply and wait for it to apply. In this case, as you can see here, the appliance will be rebooted. So we're gonna go ahead and let that reboot. Again, gonna pause the video while this does this because I don't think you really wanna watch this screen just refresh. And once we're back in this, I'll go ahead and uh, we'll walk through the, the next configuration. All right, and we're back. Um, both appliances have finished rebooting. So we're going to go ahead and go back into the appliance configuration. Look at just general really quickly. Um, you can configure the password policy, enable FIPS mode from here, as you can see. I mentioned in the first video that if I wanted to enable cognitive threat analytics, I could do so from the flow collector and the SMC. And that's where um, the global threat analytics, where uh, you can actually have that go up to the cloud, uh, the a the uh, the machine learning aspect of this is turned on. And what happens with that is you're able to utilize that f that free uh, cognitive analytics cloud that correlates threats between different customers. And you know it takes all that metadata and it determines, hey, this is something you should look at. And it gives you a lot of detail, like right down to like, 
what potential family of malware if something's commu communicating anomalously. So this is one of those things where it's optional to turn on. There's no extra license to have it. If you want to use um, encrypt encrypted thread analytics as well, this is what you would want to also turn on. So I'm going to go ahead and do this in my lab and um, customer success metrics, sure. Uh, if I want to enable StealthWatch Cloud Early Access as well and uh, automatic updates. So I'm going to go ahead and apply these settings and um, it says here that uh, if it's rebooted, it'll go ahead. If it needs a reboot, it'll go ahead and do so. I'm going to do so also over in the SMC. So I want to have an opening message on the SMC, by the way. Thank you for using the security demo lab. Please don't, don't make any change. Yeah, I'll just say thank you for using the security demo lab. And let's see. You'll have to, in order to make uh, cognitive threat analytics work, you have to enable it both from the FMC and the flow collector. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I, the customer success metrics, this is optional, as you can see here. Um, it's just vital information about the usage. Um, cloud early access, again, that's not contingent to, you don't have to enable that to make cognitive threat analytics work, but I'm doing so because I might make a video about it afterwards. And I'll go ahead and put automatic updates as well for, for things in regards to cognitive threat analytics and cloud and uh, early cloud access. So I'm going to go ahead and apply, uh, apply settings. And uh, while that's applying, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and come back once those are, have, that's applied on both appliances. All right, so both of the appliances have had the, the configuration set that, we've, uh, that we uh, applied. And if you go back to the StealthWatch Management Console now, there's a widget that's added for uh, for cognitive threat analytics that's down here. Obviously, there's nothing going to there's nothing that's going to be alerting right now because I just turned it on and I don't really have a lot of NetFlow going towards the flow collector. But that widget will that was previously not there actually will pull up now. Um, the next thing we're going to do through the central management is look at the update manager. Now, um, the update manager is where if you want to push patches, hot fixes, or uh, upgrades from the, uh, the StealthWatch central management, you would do so here. Um, since we're on 7.0, there's no patches or any sort of updates to do yet, so we're kind of leaving this alone, but this is just where you, you would do it in the, ma the management console. Now, the, as of StealthWatch 7.0, it includes the ability to install um, optional applications. Um, there's three right now, which uh, which you can use and download for free off of cisco.com. But um, I'm assuming that they're going to be in, uh, adding some more over time. The first one is um, there's one for ETA cryptographic audit, which you can audit the um, if you have ETA enabled or, um, on your network, you can actually use it to audit for certain TLS ver versions. Um, there's a host classifier with app which classifies um, top top uh, host types like DNS servers, AD. It's right now I think it's only limited to like the top t ten most frequent ones, but it would based on the behavioral say, hey, this is most likely an AD server or a DNS server. And then there's a visibility assessment which provides a nice little executive report for executives that uh, based on the traffic saying, hey, this is our top 10 risks. This is how much data we've seen uploaded, downloaded from the internet. It's, it's, it's a high level uh, report for, for uh, management pretty much. So I'm gonna go ahead and start installing some apps really quickly and just show you kind of how that's done. So the first one is the visibility assessment. I'm gonna install that, uh, that one and Again, it just begins with apps and we, the file begins with app and you upload one file at a time. So it's going to take a couple minutes to install um, and I'll go ahead and just kind of pause the video while I do so just to save you guys some time and you don't have to stare at my screen processing and we'll come back to it once it's done. Okay, that's finished installing now. It only, actually only took a couple seconds after I paused the video, so yay. Um, so now that the visibility assessment app is installed, we can go over to um, the StealthWatch dashboard, and now the visibility assessment report is a new dashboard that's available here. So you can generate a report if there's traffic coming through that would uh, include some pretty cool details. So again, it's a high-level report that you can kind of download as a PDF, uh, as a printable PDF if you'd like, but 
Right now there's no traffic going through my network, so not really important. Let's go ahead and install the next app, um, the Host Classifier app. This one's pretty cool, um, and I'm hoping that they expand upon it in time. So give it a couple minutes to install and come back to this video once it's done. Okay, now that that's finished installing, let's go ahead and go back to the dashboard and we can see the host classifier is now an option. And based off of uh, off of traffic that StealthWatch is seeing, it can say, look, this is these are the hosts that we suspect are domain controllers. Would you like to move them to that host group? These are the suspected NTP, DNS, web servers, and you can go ahead and classify based off of this, this application. So again, we're gonna go back and install one last report. That's the uh, ETA report for uh, encrypted threat analytics. I do not have um, encrypted threat analytics set up quite yet, but I do actually have a, a Catalyst 9K in my lab and I'm planning on doing a video on that uh, probably later on this week, but we'll just go ahead and install this application right now. So let's go ahead and refresh this and ETA cryptographic audit. So now that's a new dashboard that we can kind of search through and we can uh, we can go ahead and search for specific times, specific host groups, and go from there. So that's kind of the uh, the administrative changes that were that uh, have been updated inside of StealthWatch 7.0. I'm going to go ahead and stop this video, and then I'll start another video on kind of configuring this and kind of some of the basics of StealthWatch, so you guys understand a little bit for uh, a little bit more.